Today, I'm gonna to show you how to service your four-stroke outboard motor. And today, we're gonna to be replacing the engine oil with the oil filter, the spark plugs, the impeller, and also the lower unit fluid. One of the first things and the easiest things that we can do right now is replace the spark plugs. It's really simple. Just pop up the cap, get your socket, put it over the spark plug, get your wrench, remove it out. And there you go. This is the old spark plug. And here is the new one. Now, when you put this back in, um, different motors require different plug gaps, so you're gonna need a feeler gauge in order to gap these. I'm gonna show you what a feeler gauge looks like. So there are many feeler gauges on the market. Um, it tells you the millimeters on each of these feeler gauges and the gaps. So you could take one of these feeler gauges, then you could measure between here. Depending, like I said, depending on your motor, um, it requires different gaps. So I just went on online and for this motor, um, as you could see, it requires uh, 32 thousandths of an inch. I pulled this online for a plug gap. So you wanna take your spark plug and your feeler gauge and find the right gauge that is required. So all you have to do, put the feeler gauge right in between here and you want a snug, you want a snug fit. Uh, you don't want it too loose or too tight. You just want it just right. You just want it to be just right. And actually, this one is doesn't need any uh, adjusting. This one fits really good, no problems, and uh, it's ready to be put in there. It's also good if you put some of this anti seize on the threads because next time you service the engine, the spark plugs will come out really easy. Just spread them on the threads, it's really easy. Any auto store has this stuff. And all you do now is you're going to put the spark plug into the engine and you are going to torque it down to the specific specs. So this engine requires 17 newton meters or 12.5 foot pounds. And if you have a torque wrench, this is what a torque wrench looks like. There's different versions of this. This is a digital torque wrench. And this is really handy because I could go in here and it's in foot pounds. I'm gonna go newton meters, put in 17. 17 newton meters right there. Now I'm gonna turn this until I hear a clicking noise. Hear that? That means uh, it's the spark plug is already torqued and you do not want to go more than this. That means that's a stopping point. So the first plug is done and you're just going to repeat this process for the other three spark plugs on this engine. So the next thing that we are going to do is replace the engine oil and filter. Before you do this step, you want to warm up the engine for a few minutes. I already done it to this engine. And you are going to need a 14 millimeter socket because the drain bolt is right here. We need to remove that to drain the oil. So using your socket, you want to remove the bolt and have a pan handy on you to catch the old oil. The next step is removing the oil filter. You need to get a rag and place it under the oil filter because you will have oil leaking once the oil filter is removed. You're going to need one of these mechanisms or something similar. Uh, this is a oil filter remover. Once you break the oil filter loose, it will come right out. Here is a genuine Yamaha oil filter. Came with the box. You want to remove this wrapping. And you also want to get some used motor oil and just lube up the O-ring. After that, 
you want to install the oil filter onto the engine. And then I'm going to get a clean rag to get a good grip on this. And you want to hand tighten this. You don't have to tighten this really tight. Just tighten it by your hand, with your hand. So, there we go. Remove your old rag and clean up the old, any old oil that might have dripped down here. So I'm going with Yamalube, what the motor calls for, but you can use whatever type of oil you go with. Uh, before you add this engine oil, make sure you tighten the drain plug, which was below here on the pan. So after adding your engine oil, you want to check the level. This particular engine takes 2.2 quarts. If you're changing the filter, and if you're not changing the filter, it takes two quarts. <clears throat> and the dipstick is located over here. You want to put the dipstick in, pull it out, and check the level. As you can see, it's at the full mark, but I have not started the engine. Once I start the engine, uh, the level will go down a little bit and you want to add uh, the necessary oil to put at the full mark because the oil filter is uh, currently empty because <clears throat> we replaced that with a brand new oil filter. So make sure <clears throat> after running the engine, you add additional engine oil to your engine. So today I'm going to show you how to replace your impeller on your Yamaha 74 stroke outboard motor. The first thing you need to do is you need to tilt your motor up. I'm going to use the tilt button on the side of this engine. Tilting the motor up will allow us to easily work on this engine and uh, removing the lower unit will be a lot easier. So our next step is to remove the lower unit to access the impeller and it's going to have a fresh impeller so it has a good solid stream coming out of the engine so the engine is cool when running. Located on your midsection you have this rubber piece that you need to remove. Sometimes you can get it with your fingers. If not, use a flathead screwdriver to help you pry this out. There you go. And down here uh, we're going to remove a bolt. Using a 12 millimeter socket, you need to remove the bolt which holds the zinc trim. And once you remove this trim tab, there is a hidden bolt that is holding the midsection and the low unit together. Once you unscrew the bolt completely, the zinc will come right out and right here is a hidden bolt. You also need a 12 mil millimeter socket to remove this bolt. And here is the bolt. There you go. So the next step is getting a 14 millimeter wrench and removing all these bolts. There are one, two, two on one side and two on the other side. So four in total that you need to remove. So after removing all the bolts, you always want to leave one on there just in case, you know, we don't want the lower unit flying all the way down. Uh, you want to tap it. All right, so we're gonna take the safety bolt out that I put in here. Put that to the side and you want to lower it down and do not lower it all the way down because you have your speedo tube right here that we have to disconnect. So right now what I'm doing is I'm going back and forth with my pliers to loosen up the tube and that will make it to come free just like that. Now slide the lower unit right out of the engine. So now all we do is remove the water pump housing. You need a 12 millimeter socket and wrench to remove these bolts. And once this housing comes up, you will, you will have access to your water impeller. 
so all the bolts are removed I'm just gonna lift up on this water pump housing try not to damage the gaskets you might have to use your finger just like that you are exposed to your impeller so now all you need is a flathead and all you have to do is pry the impeller out there we go uh, make sure you watch your uh, key shaft right here it's a woodruff key um, you do not want to lose that because you need that for your impeller to spin for comparisons here's the new one versus the old one as you can see these fins are straight that's how it's supposed to be and you really don't want the fins to be bent like that because that will reduce the pumping of the water going through your engine so to install this you want to make sure that the notch right here that's for your uh, woodruff key to slide in there that has to be going down so I'm gonna slide this over the shaft on to here and you want to line up the impeller with that notch this is very important and there we go she's in it's always a good idea to put some grease in your water pump housing now we are going to slide this housing onto the impeller right now So while putting pressure with one hand on the impeller housing, you want to rotate the drive shaft clockwise while putting pressure on the housing. There you go. Now make sure you grease up your bolts or put anti-seize so it comes out good uh, the next time you service your engine. I'm going to be using grease. Before reassembling this lower unit, get some grease, put it at the end of the drive shaft because I've seen sometimes that the drive shaft could actually lock into your power head if you don't grease up the splines. So we are going to put the lower unit back onto the engine. Make sure you connect the tube. Don't forget that. That is to use your speedometer. If you don't hook that up, your speedometer won't work. And we're just gonna line things up. If you're lucky, it's gonna slide in like that onto your engine. Sometimes you have to rotate the drive shaft or the power head to line up the splines on the drive shaft when assembling the lower unit you want to make sure that you do grease up your bolts or you put some anti-seize on it So make sure that you tighten all the bolts and don't forget the one that goes under the trim tab. So with the service, I'm gonna be installing a new zinc because the old one, it did have some corrosion on it and it's a cheap replacement and makes your motor look a lot better than having corroded zincs on your engine. So we're going to install that right now. After installing the zinc, don't forget this rubber grommet piece, which goes on your midsection. Just like that. Our next step is to drain the lower unit fluid. You are going to remove a flathead screw at the bottom of the lower unit. Make sure you have a pan handy. <clears throat> and 
and you also want to remove the top uh, screw because right now as you can see not a lot of oil is coming up because it's causing a vacuum effect in the lower unit now you're going to start seeing a lot of oil coming out there you go So we are going to be adding Yama Lube Marine Gear Case Lube. Uh, when putting this lube into the engine, you want to make sure that the engine is lowered. Uh, you want to make sure that you do have your gaskets for, well I have one stuck right here, I can't really show you, but the bottom one came out. Gaskets will look like that, that red thing. Make sure you have both gaskets. Um, when adding uh, the lower unit fluid, you're going to be adding it from the bottom. And you're gonna keep on pumping fluid into the lower unit until it comes up from the top. There we go. That tells me that the lower unit fluid is full of oil. Next, we are going to tighten the top bolt first. Next, we are going to remove the gear fluid adapter hose. And then put your finger covering the hole so we don't spill too much oil. Once you have your screw, you want to put it in the hole really quick, tighten it with your fingers a little bit so that it grips. Get your flathead and, and tighten it tight. And there you go. That's how you service the lower unit. And that's pretty much it. That's how you're going to service your four stroke outboard motor. Uh, the last step is to start the engine up to make sure that the engine oil is good, getting through the filter and checking the engine oil to make sure that the engine level is proper. Uh, we also want to check if the lower unit is going into gear smoothly, forward, neutral, reverse, and also that the engine is pumping good water. So that is the last step that we are going to do. So the motor is ready to be started. Here we're gonna fire her up. First thing we saw is the uh, impeller kick in. It's pumping great water. Really good water flow. Um, I'm gonna tilt the motor up so when I put it in gear it doesn't hit my stand. Uh, that should be good enough. I'm going to put the motor into forward first. Neutral and reverse. Alright, so the motor is working just like it's supposed to be. It's pumping great water, shifting through its gears like it's supposed to. And Last thing we're gonna check is the oil. We're gonna let it warm up for a few minutes. All right, so I have my dip back out. I'm just wiping it. So you wanna put it back in the engine, pull it back out, and it's gonna give you a great reading. As you can see, see how much oil we're missing? The level right now is up to here where my pinky is, and it's supposed to be up to here. That's how much we dropped from here to here. So we have to add engine oil.